Hey guys, what's up? So today we're going to be reviewing 13 tips for performing your poetry in public. Now, if you're not a poet, you should still pay attention because these tips can help anyone who's concerned with public speaking. I know that for me, I get very nervous when speaking in front of a crowd, so I found that these tips really make a difference. And in case you were wondering, these guidelines are courtesy of Taylor Molly, a world-renowned poet and teacher. Many of you probably know his poem, What Teachers Make. So big shout out to Taylor so we can give credit where credit is due. The first tip is performance is an editing tool. You learn things about your writing when you perform it. Don't think twice about going back and revising a section of your poem or the entire poem based on the reactions or lack of reactions you get from a live audience. Grab this world by its clothespins and shake it out again and again and jump on top and take it for a spin. And when you hop off, shake it again for this is yours. The second tip is be an expert on the microphone. Know how to adjust the mic stand in case you need to. Know where the mic should be and how close you should be to it. Remember, you have at least 15 seconds to get ready before people will begin to wonder why you haven't started. Is this thing turned on? Because I am. Tip number three is clarity above all else. If the messenger is not clear, then there really isn't any message, is there? You could be the most brilliant poet in the world, but if no one understands you, they won't listen. Try over-enunciating, exaggerating the shape of your mouth with each word. You will not sound as stupid as you think you look. They found landmines and broken women's souls. Black holes in the parts of their hearts that once sang symphonies of creation, bright as a light on infinity's halo. She says, I remember the way love used to glow on my skin before he made his way in. Every touch feels like a sin, like a crucified Medusa. Kali Oshun, marry, bury me in a blue blanket so their God doesn't know I'm a girl. Tip number four is, everyone wants you to be amazing. Despite what you might think, the audience is not waiting for you to mess up. Nor are they hoping you do. They want you to blow them away with your words, so do them a favor and do so. How come no one told me Tinky Eyes was a compliment? <laughs> Yo, I wanna be down too, I must be confused between lyrics like Damn, she's fly, high with Tinky Eyes, and Tinky, I could re -inspire. and if I buy, I don't understand the words. Why don't you teach me? Tip number five is, have an interesting voice. Or if you don't, at least use a fuller range of your voice than you would in a normal conversation. Get deeper in places and higher in others. Sing, I mean it, include lines from songs in your poems and sing them, especially if you don't think you have a very good voice. The audience will love and admire you for having such guts. Symphony of me is stuck in staccato like a broken break beat. Breaking the vinyl into bits of blackness, spinning in circles, come down selector. Tip number six is instruct or entertain, or if possible, do both. Poets, like teachers, are part entertainers. Their poems should delight as well as inform. Put a little humor in most poems, even the sad ones. I always asked my mother why a diamond meant that you loved someone. Why not give him a brick, or a snail, or a wombat, or a cat's brain to show him you're crazy about it? Tip number seven is, does a poem have to be true? Not in the way an article in a newspaper or testimony in a court of law has to be true. You are allowed to change things here and there, use your poetic license, or even make things up if they serve your poem. Your poem should serve the larger truth with a capital T. It should be true to you even if it never happened. The eighth tip is have a few lines that everyone will understand. If you write nonlinear poems, which are more lyrical, imagistic poems that don't necessarily tell a story, be sure to have a few places where the audience can rest and think, I understood that. If you don't, they will stop listening to you.
Okay, there's a few heartbreaks that chocolate can't fix, but that's what the rain boots are for. Because rain will wash away everything if you let it. I want her to look at the world through the underside of a glass-bottom boat, to look through a microscope at the galaxies that exist on the pinpoint of a human mind. Because that's the way my mom taught me that there'll be days like this. There'll be days like this. My mama said. Tip number nine is. Never say, I just wrote this poem today. Because if you do, it means you either want the audience to be easy on you, because you're afraid your poem is bad, or be impressed by you, because you think it is good. Better to just shut up and recite the poem. Tip number 10 is, go back to the nugget of truth. Sometimes we get so caught up in trying to make our poems sound like poetry that we don't let ourselves say simple, truthful, beautiful things that would help the poem immensely. Things like, sometimes I wished I were an only child. Don't be afraid to leave the truth unadorned. He goes down to the rocks and he reads to the fish. He reads to them poems, poems from books. Poems about the human condition, about the muscles inside of him that question and quiver and shiver and sleep. Bottle in one hand, book in the other, books clutching poems like they were their mother, too afraid to let their children out into the soft fear of the electric night. Tip number 11 is, stay still or have a reason for moving. Movement is usually the result of nervousness, and everyone can tell. Plant your feet and don't fidget. If you let your hands hang naturally at your sides, you will look normal, even if you feel stupid. Tip number 12 is, no one needs to know if you forget a line. If your mind goes blank, take a pause. Don't let the audience know you have no idea what comes next. Start singing Amazing Grace. Make up the rest of your poem as best you can. No one cares that it's not perfect except you. Our final tip, number 13, is try to signal that the poem is over. You know you have performed a poem well if the audience knows when it is time to start clapping simply because you started smiling. Don't be afraid to end with a moment of expectant silence. When they start to clap, stay for a moment and collect the applause before walking away. And that concludes our 13 tips for performing your poetry in public. I hope this video was helpful and that it has encouraged you to get up on a mic and rock it. So shout out to the NYU crew, big up Sava, and big up to Miss Watson's ninth grade English class. I'm out. Peace, love, and light.